The Hearing Voices Network, um, which now exists uh, in hundreds of support groups all over the world on, I think, six continents, um, is, and is 20 years old, um, is a collaborative um, uh, group, grouping of um, peer support groups for people who have experiences that psychiatrists would call auditory hallucinations or vis visual hallucinations. And when the Hearing Voices Network first started 20 years ago, the key idea that it wanted to suggest was that it was possible to think about something like hallucinations, which by definition, if you just think about that word, that word is a completely pathologized word. If you say about someone they're having a hallucination, by definition you're saying they're hearing something that's not there, they're seeing something that's not there. That's what hallucination means as a word. So the not there part means there's something wrong with them, just by definition, if you use that word. And the Hearing Voices Network, to start with, proposed an alternative language that got rid of the pathologizing part and just focused on what the experience was. Because, of course, what is a, quote, hallucination? Let's talk about auditory ones. It's the experience of hearing a voice, or more than one. So the Hearing Voices Network, first of all, said, let's just call it what it is. Let's use this word because it's much clearer, and it's much more descriptive, and it leaves out the pathologizing part. Now, proposing that way of looking at things, and over the past 20 years of research, and hundreds and hundreds of groups that have advanced this view, has created a viable alternative, in fact many people, including me, would argue a much more viable alternative, to understanding those kinds of experiences than the model from psychiatry that says there's something wrong with your brain, you have an illness called schizophrenia, it's producing this symptom called hallucinations, take this medication in the hopes that it will block them out. Now, of course, we know, first of all, there are a lot of people for whom these medications don't, in fact, block out their voices. They just damp them down and make them harder to hear, but just as problematic. There are other people who take these medications and doesn't do anything to their voices. They're just as tormented by them. Maybe people right in this room right now who've had this experience. Um, but certainly, what we know from decades of psychiatrists saying this is how to understand hallucinations is that there are a lot of people who don't feel as if this point of view has been helpful to them. It hasn't helped them cope with their difficulties, and it certainly hasn't helped them understand why those voices are there or what they're saying. And the whole key idea of the Hearing Voices Network was to provide a safe space in which people could come together and talk about their voices, what those voices are saying, what significance they might have in their life, what symbolic meaning they have, why they're there in the first place, and what the person could do to cope with them more effectively. There are now hundreds of such groups. I'm, I'm proud to say that having spent a lot of time with HVN groups in the UK, I then went back to the United States and started one of the first groups uh, in the United States. Um, uh, the UK right now, a country of 60 million people, has um, uh, about 175 um, hearing voices peer support groups. The United States, a country of 300 million people, has uh, two or three such groups, one of which is the one I helped to start in Massachusetts. Um, we can talk about why that would be. Um, but what we see in the development of HVN over the past 20 years has been a whole alternative model. This is an example of what I'm talking about, that if we start from people's lived experience, we come up with a very different way of understanding an aspect of the mind, in this case hearing voices, and, in the case of HVN, a very effective way of coping with those difficulties that people can learn.